G'day, how you going? I'm Ian Appleish, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Before we get started, I'll get the size up there. One of the other videos, I forgot to say that. And I'll also get some colours going up the screen as well. That way you can write them down, watch the video, see what's going to happen, and then play and pause and paint along with me. And if it's your first time, do a bit of practice and have fun because you can do it. I know you can. So today we're going to do a bit of a leafy green field fence, bit of a sky peek and boo saying g'day, how you all going down there? Bit of depth in nature, all right? And that's what we're going to get on the canvas because we need some great, beautiful depth and a bit of a landscape with all these elements in there that make people go, look at that painting up there. I like that. So come on, let's get right into it. So we're going to have, let's say, a bit of a fence line coming here somewhere coming through the painting a nice tree just to the left and some shrubbery out here and our sky there and just the foreground okay now to start off with the sky i've got some craft paint that's just soft paint student paint poster paint it's just a very soft consistency titanium white okay and i like to mix some of that up with the retarder and that's going to slow down the drawing time of that now i just want to paint the sky area in here okay and our sky is all at the top so we'll just get this on there like so there's not a lot of retarder in here don't need a massive amount it's just where i'm doing the sky so it's pretty much and where my big tree is i want some sky in there so as we can get some sky windows coming through the tree because you don't want a sky here and a big solid tree where you can't see through it because it just doesn't look quite right and if you're aware of that you'll have beautiful paintings so i'm going to stroke that left and right just like that all right nice and thin it's not very thick so that's just a soft titanium white flow body paint with some retarder in there. Now I'm just gonna wipe that brush and do my colored sky. Now for the sky, I'm going for cerulean blue and I've got some gray because I don't want it just blue. I wanted a gray blue, sort of a, almost getting ready to be an overcast day. So that's the color I want. I'm trying to go for some more real colors instead of loud, bright cartoony colors i know we're all beginners but we can always put these real facets in there so let's get all that mixed with the putter on a brush get our sky on there all the way across the top push it into that white push it into that white push it in push it in now i'm gonna have that big tree here don't forget so i'm not going too crazy over there push it down to your horizon area right it's all pushed in what have we got there? We've got a bit of a blob or something going on there. There we go, I got rid of that. A bit more there. Now we want to stroke it left and right and get it nice and smooth. And if we're going to put any clouds on there, we can. It's up to you if you want to put clouds or not. Now, next up, I'm going to use my fan brush and just put some sweeping clouds in there. Now, I'm using a new camera, by the way, so I've got to be careful where I point it because sometimes my hand might blur what's on the, the, the canvas there. So I'm getting used to it, so bear with me. So I'll pick up this titanium white and I'll just put some sweeping clouds. Try to get them that coming over our head look, okay? So I'll chisel that onto my fan brush. Hog bristle fan brush, this is. And I want to... I'm going to have that big tree there. I might have just something here. Just stamp it on whichever way you want. You stamp on your cloud like this. Coming flat across the horizon line. Stamp it on. It's starting to run out now. See how the white over here was nice and white? And now it's starting to just mix with the blue. Stop. That's why you've got to practice. And pick up your blending brush and grab a cloth and you want to be wiping your blending brush as you go. Now I want to tickle the tops of that first. Look at that. Tickle the tops of that. And blend these clouds within the sky. Look at that. Beautiful. See what's happening? Get the top there, blend it the way you want. Tickle the tops coming out and just sit it see I don't like this bit here compared to here so I'm going to try and fluff that up a bit 
wipe your brush. It's all a matter of being careful of what you do and practice what you're doing. And now we're going to sit all this down into the sky there. Sit it all down, because we're going to have trees here. This is just background clouds. I know what's happening here. Once the painting's done, you'll see why I'm doing it this way. So I'd like to come from here and start scooping up. Create a body. There's the cloud. I'm not going to just do a line. You've got to give it some body. Some of the body can have bright and duller colours of the white. I'm coming up here. That'll do. Grab your blending brush. And I want to blend. Giving turmoil, that blue colour underneath with that white retarded paint is acting like it's I'm an oil artist and it's working the way an oil artist can paint their clouds and that's why I've developed that procedure over many years and it works a treat for a beginner to learn how to paint acrylic clouds in any sky whether it's a warm or a cool sky now we get that down there look at that you just the clouds make themselves up okay we've got light and duller spots within there now if you want, you can put something on the horizon line. The big tree is going to be there, so it will come out of that. Now see where this cloud is? I want to bring this one like that, in a line. Just something to scratch through there like that. Boom. And I want to leave the top line of that cloud pretty hard and sharp, and then just start tapering and dancing the bottom of it down to the horizon line. So you'll see what I'm doing here, leaving the top nice and hard and bringing it down into some weather. There we go. Now the sky's done roughly where I'm going to put my tree, which is about here. There's a lot of I'll just kind of get rid of a lot of the bulk of the paint and then I'm going to dry it, okay? Now, I've got perylene green, the really dark blackish green and forest green because I want to create a dark green but not too dark, so that's why I'm mixing the two together. I've got a bit of water I sprayed onto my canvas there and I'm just going to map in the bottom. Now, let me look at that if it's dark enough. I might add little bit more of the per, the um, perylene green to that so it's not quite black but it's not quite green either now we'll start at the bottom just get all this pushed on get it all pushed on get up to roughly how horizon line I'm just going to get a bit more water onto that palette there so it's a bit more transferable Oh, yeah. Get up to our horizon line, somewhere about there. Okay, so I've just done a green, dark green, blackish green, perylene green. Now I'm going to grab another brush and I want to create the, the background trees here first with the dark colour. So work out what brush you're going to use. You know what? I might just use this one here. It's a round brush, nice big round brush. I'll, I'll wet it a bit in some water, pick up some more of that paint that I've mixed onto the palette there. And I'm going to, that big tree's about here, so I want to get now, I'll get the solid bits dancing along first. Now see, that's not very dark really, it's, it's not as dark as I would have liked it to be. But we'll get this coming along to the height we want. I'm turning this brush around, I want it kind of airy and scratchy and you know the top part so it looks like shrubs and we'll get that going along the horizon line like that now I might be able to use the actual perylene green on its own to get the depth within here so I want to bring this now roughly to about where it's going to stop about there now this brush is fairing out at the top, which is great. Look, see how I can make some nice tree tops, shrub tops. 
out there in the distance. Uh, let's try along here. Get some right up in there, right up in the sky. Yeah. Some over here, a big pocket there somewhere. Branch it out, mushroom shape it out a bit. There we go. So I've dried what's on the canvas. Now I'm picking up the perylene green, the really dark green, or mix yourself up a blackish green, pretty much close to black. And there's my horizon. So I want to get nice and dark in here now. So pretty much all the way along the horizon line like this. Now I'm painting this the way I'm assuming a beginner might tackle it, okay? I don't want to try and paint too professional and try and bring you where you can't achieve just yet. And we're going to radiate this out into that green there just like so i'm using the edge tips of this brush to be opened up and get very dotty some dark bits in there along the middle and then you pretty much feather it into the shrubs but not too much because we've got a highlight in there and we don't want it looking too blobby now I've dried everything on the canvas up there now I've got a deer foot it's pretty much one that can create some spotty foliage like that get a brush that's going to do that kind of behavior on your canvas okay now when you load it up don't load it up too thick otherwise you'll get big solid blobs like that you don't want solid blobs okay you want open dotty freckly now this is just a bit of sap green with some white in it now i want to kind of create some shrubs just like so leaving the horizon line dark along here bits in there maybe something here now what i'm doing i'll show you with the low bits i'm doing the low bits first and maybe a little bit here just brighten that up and then we'll bring the forward trees so we'll bring this one some shrubs trees whatever they are and we'll bring this in front of there trying to show the different shrubs we've got growing here in the background and you can see the openness hopefully shrubby like what's happening now get yourself a script line and get some black and white together so you're getting a grey and within here we want to create from the black some beautiful skinny wiggly shrub trunks have a look how they're going if they're too dark just add some more white to the mix come from the dark bits and then the highlights that we put into this foliage here will be what sinks all these uh, trunks back a bit thinner too nice and thin get something up there now the sap green we had get some water i've just got a little round brush and i'm going to mix up some yellow just like this just to get a, a highlight colour for that green going on in there. And then you want to nice dots here and there, facets of dots within this. Play with it, practice it. And we're going to gradually detail this with a bit of pizzazz instead of just getting a brush and making big stamp marks I mean we can go one step further and do it this way now try and control your dots as you go so as they're looking reasonably real get some of it out there you just don't go everywhere just periodically work it out squint your eyes or look through a camera lens uh, we'll get some coming around the top of that. I want to create a tree in front there, surrounding 
those trunks there. I'll just show you on this one. And this is a pleasant way to create beautiful trees and foliage, all sorts of realism business within your paint. So with saying that, you can see what I've done there. I've added a bit more yellow to that mix I was dotting on there, highlighting it, and we just here and there get some pockets of this colour radiating through, cre creating lots of different blends of foliage within your trees out there. It's radiating across. and we can probably bring this one as well in front coming down and sunk that one back okay we can do the top of him but that's it and the more you do these the more you'll feel the science of how they work and how they should look everything has a science to it numbers mathematical numbers and if you understand the color wheel you'll be amazed how scientific colors work with each other now the next bit's fun. We're just gonna work out, I'm gonna, I've used that uh, sap green for here, the flavor. So this one here, I'm gonna use forest green, okay? And we're just gonna cut in the lawn, so then we can put this tree in. So I've got me forest green, and I'm gonna add the yellow to get the flavor that I want. Bit more, bit more. Now there's a guy that lives in this paddock and he's got a ride on lawnmower and he rides his lawnmower every Tuesday morning and keeps this lawn beautiful. So we're gonna do a beautiful lawn. So I'll just start scratching it in from the bottom like this. There we go, scratch it in. And then from the trees, we wanna keep some dark there. So let's try and, there's the bank, boom. I don't want to go any higher than that. So this is our forest green. Let's get it right up against those trees there. We'll come along and we'll stamp our lawn if we can. Now we need it to be very inky enough to transfer off your brush onto our canvas. So we're just dotting this in. We've done the main bulk of it. Stroking the brush across it left and right. And we're getting some different values of grass here now. It's very wet, so the good thing about acrylics is you can dry each stage as you go. So if this is not working properly, I can turn the camera off and dry it. And you get the gist of what's happening with our, see our field out there? Oh, it's beautiful. Get against there a bit. Now before we move along to the next stage, see here, we, we can fix that up like by bringing, grab that sap green again and just bring some of those over there down a bit like this. Let's say some about here as well. And then grab the yellow mixed with it as well. Now you can see what I've done there. I'm just adding a little bit more yellow to that sap green and we're gonna gingerly and gently highlight what we've just put on. So we're bringing that bit of shrub forward. Just so as that black line under our shrubs there didn't look too factory. There we go. We can keep going with that till the cows come up. That dot there I don't like. I went a bit stupid there. I'll put a bit of black over that if I can. There we go. Now we're gonna put this tree in here. I've got this one inch brush, something I can stamp the main bulk of it on with. And I've got the tarot green here. I've wet the palette so as we can get a nice scratchy foliage going. And I wanna come pretty much off the, oh, I want sky windows, remember? So let's bring this with our sky windows about there. Let's work out where we want it. And I want it to come in about this far off the ground there. Uh, let's get a bit more water. Let's 
because this is a soft brush, it's kind of all right, but it's, it needs the paint to be stampy. And we want to come right off the painting here and get this, the dark values within our tree. Nice and dark down here. Now I've finished stamping that on. Now for that tree, I want to mix up the sap green and the cad yellow light to get our uh, foliage color. And I'm going to use my deer foot or something like I showed you before here to get that kind of look. We're going to put this color on that dark color that we've just put on, and then we are going to highlight it. So I've got my deer foot and I'm going to start creating my leaf bunches within this tree. So see how they're stamping on? That's the look I want. I'll get some up here. Probably the camera can't see them quite well. And see the black out here? You want to come beyond that. Leave pockets of black in there. Lightly press this. If you can't find a deer foot in your shop, try and create or make a brush that's going to do the same kind of thing. Now I want to put the trunk in. So a basic simple trunk. We'll get some burnt umber, okay? And add some craft white with that and get the value of the trunk that you want going. And we want to come, I want to come from about here in the, um, here, so, and I want to come about there and then start fading inside the tree there, something like that. Okay, that's good. We'll get another part of it. I'm twisting this brush as I go. Okay, boom. Now we could probably put a bit of a branch coming out here. You will see. And there's not too much. Let's get something sort of bolstering off there coming up here. Okay. Now that wasn't too much effort, was it? You can do that. Let's put a bit of this one all the way up there, maybe just there. And this one is somewhere there. I'll just try and pretend I know what I'm doing. Here and there. It pays to do these little extras those simple trunks will be sat back. Now that's what I stamped it on with with the uh, deer foot. So I'm going to grab the cadmium yellow light again and just slowly get some of that in there. Not too much. You always add the darker colour to your light pile. Don't have a big dark pile and try and add light to it because you're going to use 10 times the amount. Now my brush was all thick and blobby and goobly gloop so I've re-washed it and reloaded it. And now we are going to sink the trunks back with this tree. So we'll probably bring this over here like that. This is the tree leaves. Uh, I want to concentrate right where it meets the lawn. Get some bits out there as well. Let's hope it's not too much clashing. Now we'll get here. Now to bring this tree home, you could be happy with it left like that, but we're gonna do the final touch to it. Do you remember this round brush that I had before? I'm going to use that, grab some water, and get this highlighted colour. 
We can even put a little bit of burn umber in there as well. Make a little bit of that colour. And we'll put this colour throughout and then highlight it. Now I have dried the tree, so now these dots like we did in the far ground, these are going to detail it and separate the tree from the field grass right at the edge here, see? Uh, we'll put some bits of it here. This is just the dead wood colour bits because we will add the highlights over all of this. Now grabbing the sap green and the cadmium yellow, we're putting this tree now in front of all that at the back there. I'm using this to get our front leaves on this tree right in front of all that bush there, down here. To give us our leaves in front, the light hitting them. Okay, we'll whack a bit of a fence in there as well, so we can use a stick to get some kind of line or something to lean on. And it'll probably want to come from about here. Now with my fence, I want the top of it reasonably level, but if anything, on a downward motion, that's what's going through my head. Okay, so I'm mixing up the light and dark on the brush at the same time, and hopefully I can kind of And I'm going to slowly bring the bottoms a bit lower as I go. Like so. Get it, see how it's on the brush, but it's marbled. And they're obviously going to come a bit thicker as you come closer as well. And don't get carried away bringing these four ones down too much because we're, we're standing close to them so they can sort of stay there, there, it's nice and thick, come down to about there somewhere. Get the edge of it reasonably sharp, the darker value on the left side of them without being too uniform just make it all scratchy and woody and now i'm getting a bit more lighter color because i do want them to have a bit more light refracting off them mainly down this side here this will make them stand out a bit more too in this Paddock. Now I'm just getting some black on a long knife, okay? Spreading it like an even sheet. I'll wipe all that muck off it and I want to get it on its edge and pull a bead of paint on the edge of it, just like so. And I want to Get a wire, let's say, oh, I don't know, I'll do three, it means I've got to do three all the way along. Now I've got to keep them going all the way that way, okay? So we'll go from about there, something like that, looking good. Keep bringing it to the middle. Now, if anything, I'm deliberately bringing this wire just that little bit into the post so it gives that dimension. Okay, now practice this somewhere so as you don't have all big, ugly, crooked wire. I'm not the best at this, but 
I should practice what I preach to somewhere there now I'm getting the forest green on my filbert, flat filbert, and we're just going to finish this painting off now. So up here I want some leaves, just leaves. I'm going to try and use this to create some leaves like so. Boom. Doesn't have to be that. Try and tidy it up a bit. Boom, 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 boom. And we're gonna come along here, along here. Don't cover up too much of your clouds. And we're just gonna snake in some leaves here. This is just another element that'll add a bit of pizzazz to your painting. <sighs> Try and make them look like leaves, eh? There we go. Now I've dried that and I've got some burnt umber with some black mixed with it just to create the branches that are going to make all this stuff sit together. Twist it around, bring it to the leaves there. Then we'll simply dry this one and highlight it. Now we want a nice branch coming down here holding all this like so. Grabbing the same brush with some yellow and whatever green, bit of the forest green in there. And we'll try and put the leaves within all that darkness. Try and work out what's in front, what's behind. And just don't think too much of it, it's just, it's just a painting. You know, like the way highlighting these leaves, you know, the, I've done rocks or stones and you, you do the dark a bit. This is just quick, simple, artistic and effective. And we're making leaves within leaves here. Okay, probably get one right out in the sunlight there like that. And let's put a bit more yellow. So I'm just mixing a bit more yellow. And we'll try and, yeah, see? Now we'll get the this facet going. Just hitting it and pulling. You can make a few leaves within one dark blob. From one dark blob, I mean. Get it to the edge of the darkness. Don't have the darkness on the edge. You want the highlight on the edge. Just something like that. Now grabbing this craft white in a toothbrush with a little bit of that burnt umber in there and we'll just flick some daisies in there and that's it, we can sign it and whack a frame on it. So we'll go about here, mainly in front of that fence nice and little out there nice and little try and get them to look like dots not squiggly spaghetti lines in front of that fence okay cool and then under this tree there's a lot of daisies now if any of them look wrong like oh, i've got a little bit going up the um trunk there i can um just fix that down a bit. Here we go, we've got some daisies growing there. I'll call them daisies. <laughs> All right. I'm just grabbing some of the craft white on a 
round brush and I'm just making some deliberate ones closer up somewhere here pan a field of them here somewhere and while we get any I might just put some out hiding around that tree there Okay. All right, we'll just autograph this and whack a frame on it. So we'll do him right about here. Nice little one. Now I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, check out the links in the description below. You can become a patron. You can become a member of my art group. Uh, you can message me on Facebook if you want to buy a painting. Any of my tutorials are all for sale, plus prints of them and the blending brush that I use in this video. All right, whack a frame on here. Oh yeah, that doesn't look too shabby in a frame, does it? We've got a nice grassy field with some trees, a big close one that just didn't quite get in there, and we've got the sky in there saying, you know, how you going? Beautiful painting, and you can do that. All right, I had a lot of fun painting this painting and I hope you learned something in the process. Message me below if you ever have a question to ask me. Join me every Friday night, 8 p.m. Perth, Western Australia time for my Friday night live shows. All right, and if you like what I'm doing, you make sure you tell your friends and family, okay? But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.